I'm going to share with you a story about why proper gauze placement should be an integral part of your post-operative instructions. So the post-operative instructions should typically be given by your assistant or yourself if you have time, and it should include a demonstration of how to place the gauze, how to fold the gauze, and how to bite on the gauze for how long. Now, I had a patient come in one time, it was about 9 a.m. He needed an upper first molar extracted. So we did the extraction, things were uneventful, it was a simple extraction, no flaps, no extra bone removal or anything. He was given his post-operative instructions by the assistant, he went home, and he phoned back at about 4.30 that afternoon. Now the patient said, I've been biting on the gauze all day, I'm still bleeding, what should I do? So I told my receptionist, well have him bite on a tea bag, give it about 10 minutes, and then have him phone back if he's still bleeding. So sure enough, about 4.45, he phones back and he's still bleeding. The tea bag didn't work. So he's put gauze back in and he's wondering what he should do. So we close at 5 o'clock, but I live in a small town. So I basically said, come on down, we'll see you again and make sure that this is all good before the evening. So the patient comes in, <clears throat> sits down in the chair, and he starts to describe to me that he's been bleeding all day. He thought maybe it slowed down for a while, but then it kind of kept going again when he changed the gauze. He opens his mouth, and this is what I see. <laughs> and actually what I did see was a giant liver clot sitting on top of this gauze. But what the patient was doing was he was biting on the gauze just as he was directed. So he was told, bite on the gauze. He wasn't shown how to bite on the gauze or where to position the gauze just to bite on it. He was biting on it, and the blood was just pooling on top of here. There was absolutely no pressure over the extraction site. So it seems trivial, but this is something that we need to tell our patients and we need to demonstrate, like I was saying. So the proper way to have done this would be to fold this gauze up into a square. I usually will wet it so it doesn't stick to the clot and instruct the patient to wet it as well, because if it's a dry gauze and they bite on it and it happens to stay relatively dry, the clot would adhere and they pull it out and it actually pulls the clot away and they keep bleeding. So make sure that it's wet, insert it over the extraction site, I'll often tell patients to be looking in a mirror when they do it or to have someone help them to place it so that they can get it in the proper site while they're numb. And when they bite together, you should see some blanching on the tissues where that extraction took place. That tells you that they're applying adequate pressure to this gauze and they should stop bleeding within about 20 minutes. Now, <clears throat> 20 minutes is kind of how long I tell patients to go before they switch this gauze or even take a look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. As a patient, you're often concerned that you're having bleeding because you're not sure what a regular amount of bleeding is. So the tendency is for them to bite for a minute or two, take it out, have a look, still bleeding, so they put it back in. <clears throat> They're not giving it enough time to kind of set up and get clotted properly. Now the other thing that I would say is make sure that you tell your patients and emphasize that they need to do it for 20 minutes at a time, but then stop once the bleeding subsides. So I also had a patient come in one time who was having some post-operative pain. He was starting to get some sensitivity near the extraction site. And same thing, I took out the tooth the morning previous. He comes in the next day and he opens and this soggy piece of gauze is sitting there. And he says, I wasn't sure how long to leave the gauze in. And I said, well, how long has this been in there? And he said, well, since I changed it yesterday after the extraction. So this patient went all day, all night with a gauze in his mouth and we removed the gauze, kind of cleaned the area up and told him he was good to go. So patients will follow your directions often if they'll want to uh, do things properly, but you need to make sure that your directions are clear. Now, the other thing to mention is that when you're placing gauze, let's say that this is a patient who's had other extractions. So they've had these upper teeth out they are edentulous in the posterior, and now they've basically lost their first molar. You've just extracted this tooth. If we're going to put gauze over this site, a normal 2x2 two two gauze folded up and placed in here won't often apply enough pressure because there's no maxillary teeth to push down on it. So you're either going to need to double up the gauze, or what I will typically do <clears throat> is use a 4x4 four four gauze. So you use a 4x4 four four gauze, you fold it up, and you place it in this site just the same as you would with the 2x2, two two, 
but now it's thicker and as the patient bites again you'll see blanching and you'll see that there's adequate pressure in this area.